Hi students, welcome in chemistry classes. I am Priyanka Jain and you are watching videos of analytical chemistry. I have told you about several types of the topics of the analytical chemistry that are very useful for CSI and NET exam. Like we have seen thermal analysis, we have seen chromatographic techniques, we have seen different type of the titrations, okay. And then we have seen the atomic absorption spectroscopy, atomic emission spectroscopy. All the topics are quite important and we have also solved the questions based on that, okay. Now there are some different questions that I want to give you, okay. So here in this lecture, we are seeing the previous year questions from the analytical chemistry, June 2019. Let's start the video. So see here this question from June 2019. What is the question? The role of S3PO4 in the estimation of Fe second with K2Cr2O7 using diphenylamine sulfonate as the indicator is 2. We have given four options. One we have given avoid area oxidation of Fe second. Second we have given reduce the electrode potential of Fe plus C to Fe plus 2. Third we have given stabilize the indicator. And fourth, we have given stabilized K2Cr2O7, okay. We are watching here the titration of Fe plus 2 with K2Cr2O7. And here diphenyl sulfonate is being used as the indicator. Now we have to find out the role of S3PO4. S3PO4 is being added. Why we are adding it? We have to find out this thing, okay. So for understanding this, we should know the basic concept behind this titration. Actually, it is an oxidation reduction titration or we call it redox titration. What is happening here? We are taking Fe plus 2 ions, okay? And to which we are adding Cr2O7 minus 2, okay? So what we are getting actually here in this chromate, the chromium is present in plus 6 oxidation state, while here iron is present in plus 2 oxidation state, okay? So actually iron is being oxidized by this chromate ion to Fe plus 3 and this chromium is going to Cr plus 3. It means it is getting reduced and this iron is being oxidized. Okay. So, what will happen? Firstly, firstly here suppose in this solution there are Fe plus 2 ions present. Okay. Fe plus 2 ions are present and we are adding from here Cr2O7 minus ions. Okay. So, what will happen? Firstly, this chromate ion is used to oxidize this Fe plus 2 ion and ultimately at the end point all this Fe plus 2 is oxidized to Fe plus 3. It means now in the solution there is only Fe plus 3 ions at the end point. Okay. So when we are adding a little amount of Cr2 O7 minus 2 chromate ions, when we are adding the additional amount of it, what will happen? This is being utilized to oxidize diphenyl sulfonate. Okay. Now it is doing the oxidation of diphenyl amine sulfonate. This is being oxidized. Okay. So what will happen? This is an indicator. Okay. This is an indicator. Its color will change. Okay. Its reduced form and oxidized form will have different colors. So on the oxidation, it will change the color. Okay. So that we can get the end point. We can detect end point. But actually what happens? This should happen. This is hypothetical and this should happen. But actually this does not happen. What happens actually? These Fe plus 3 ions. Actually these Fe plus 3 ions and that this diphenyl I mean sulfonate will have the same potential. Okay. This Fe plus 3 ion and our indicator have same potential. Same in same electrode potential for the, both of them, okay. These are having the same potential. So, what happens actually, this Cr2O7 minus 2 is added before it, what happens, this Fe plus 3 ion will oxidize the indicator, okay. We want that this chromate ion should oxidize this diphenyl amine sulfonate, but actually what happens this, in the solution, this Fe plus 3 ions is present and this will oxidize the sulfonate. Okay, so we are getting the color change before the end point. Okay, we want this color change at the end point, but we are getting it before the end point. So this thing is called premature end point. Okay, 
we are getting premature end point and we does not want this thing to happen because by this we cannot detect the end point or we cannot detect the redox point redox reaction okay so for this what we are doing we are adding a little amount of h3po4 what is the role of h3po4 actually this h3po4 will reduce okay it reduces the electrode potential of fe plus 3 to fe plus 2 this reaction it means reduction of fe plus 3 to fe plus 2 this will reduce the electrode potential of this reaction so this reaction actually does not happens in the presence of h3po4 so the oxidation of the indicator happens only by this chromate ions okay so this is the basic function of h3po4 what is its function to reduce the electrode potential of fe plus 3 to fe plus 2 i think now the concept is clear let's see the next question see here this question from june 2019 we have asked about the incorrect statement incorrect statement for amperometric titration is okay amperometric titration first we have given it is based on measurement of diffusion current second its sensitivity is always higher than those of the spectrophotometric titrations third we have given it does not generally requires an indicator and fourth we have given it requires in a atmosphere of nitrogen or argon actually see here amperometric titration is basically a titration technique in which the diffusion current at appropriate applied voltage is measured okay we will have to measure the diffuse current at an applied voltage okay and this is plotted against the volume of the titrating solution so basically in amperometric titration we are doing a titration between the diffused current and the volume of the titrating solution we are plotting a graph between them so that we are getting a graph by which we can find out the end point okay so here this technique is actually based on the measurement of diffusion current yes it is true okay this is true because we are actually doing this thing secondly we have given it does not generally requires an indicator actually this technique does not need any indicator so this is also true because we are doing simply the titration between the current and the titrating solution's volume and third thing we have given it requires the inert atmosphere of nitrogen and argon actually in this method we requires an inert atmosphere and that is of nitrogen or argon so this is also true the only false statement is this one its sensitivity is always greater than those of the spectrophotometric titrations actually this method is less sensitive than the spectrophotometric titrations actually spectrophotometric titrations are more sensitive okay so this statement is wrong option number b is the wrong answer okay so these are two questions from the csir net question papers june 2019 meet you in some more videos with some more questions and if you are liking please share these videos please like the videos and please comment me thank you